Hello, first graders. My name is Mrs. Vang, and we have my son Ashton here, and he's going to be helping us out with our investigation today. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to be looking at a shadow investigation, and we have Willie the Gnome here who's going to also help us out. Willie the Gnome is going to be taped on our piece of paper, and what we need to do is we are trying to see if we can make Willie the Gnome create a shadow to cover the first section of our handout. And then what can we do to create a shadow that can move to cover the second section of our handout? And then lastly, what can we do to create a shadow to cover the third section? of our handout. While Ashton does this, I want you to be thinking, how is he creating shadows? Where is he placing the flashlight? And another question I want you to think about is, where does a light have to be in order for a shadow to be created? And lastly, one other question that I want you to be thinking about as you are observing is how did Ashton move the shadow? All right, first graders, we are in our dark room right now and I have Ashton here trying to create a shadow to cover the first section. It's so hard. It is hard. All right, it looks like Ashton has found his spot covering the first section. Now he's going to try to move the shadow to cover the second section. So Ashton, go ahead and try to figure that out. What are you noticing about him moving his hands or the flashlight? Do you get it? To try to get it. Oh, I think you got it. There you go. And now go ahead and try to cover your shadow in the third area. Oh, I think you already got that. What did you have to do? Okay, he's high right now. Looking at that, he's high and it looks like it's covering the first part. Try to cover the last part, Ashton. Oh, right there. Watch this video of our experiment. What happens? This video has been sped up so that 20 minutes goes by in just 20 seconds. Discuss this question. What do you think made the shadow move? Hint. In the flashlight experiment with Ashton, how did he make the shadow move? What do you think, first graders? We make our own shadows move by moving our bodies, like if we moved our hands side to side like this. But that's not the only way for a shadow to move. If you keep your hands still and the light moves instead, then a shadow can move too. At your activity stations, you were able to make the gnome shadow move, even though the gnome wasn't moving. You did that by moving the light. You moved the flashlight you were holding. When I marked the shadow of this statue by the window, it didn't seem like the gnome shadow was moving. But if we watch it slowly over time, we can see that it is moving very, very slowly. Look, you see that? It's moving. That's because the light is moving. 
In other words, the sun seems to be moving. And it's not just statue shadows that move. Have you ever noticed this with other things? Check out another video. This is a sped up video of some trees outside. Hmm. And here's the view inside of a room if we speed up the video all day. All of these shadows are moving because of what the sun is doing. The sun seems to be moving in the sky. Look, here's a sped up video of what the sun is doing. Now, you already knew the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening. But even in the middle of the day, the sun's place in the sky is changing. This shadow experiment proves it. This experiment shows you that once the sun comes up, the sun doesn't just stay in one spot in the sky. It moves. It turns out scientists discovered something that may sound kind of crazy. It's actually the earth that's moving, not the sun. But when you're standing on the earth, as we do, it looks like the sun is moving. So we find it helpful to talk as if that's true. We say things like, the sun is rising, or in this case, the sun is setting, or the sun moves across the sky. So in summary, you found out that a statue shadow can move. That's because the sun doesn't stay in one spot in the sky. It looks like it's moving across the sky. And that makes all the shadows on the ground move too, even the shadows of statues and buildings. We'll explore more about the sun in our next mystery. Have fun and stay curious. All right, first graders, now that we are done with our investigation, if you would like to try this at home, go ahead and find a flashlight and find an item and give it a try. We'll see you again in next time's investigation. Bye.